Hi, good morning. My name is Dinesh and I'm from Trey Cafe. Since the holiday season is around the corner, I'm going to teach you how to make bacon jam. I'll call it like a festive bacon jam, naughty and nice, where you can add not only bacon, but brandy. Something that you can enjoy with your family and friends at home, but it's also something great as a gifting to your friends and family. Okay, as a start, I would suggest you use a heavy bottom pot or skillet if you have. For me here, I'm just using a cast iron pot. Heat up the pot for about maybe five minutes, yeah? And then you put in the bacon. Give the bacon a stir and fry it without oil for approximately five to 10 minutes until the bacon is nice, crispy, and brown. Stir it from time to time. Okay, so after about maybe 5-10 minutes, what you can do is um, when it's brown and crispy like this, you can remove it, yeah? Why you have to fry it until super brown is because um, you want the colour of the bacon jam to be rich and just not pale colour. And also the flavour of the baked bacon jam, you want that smoky bit that comes through. So it's really important to actually fry until like super crispy. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the crispy baked bacon, drain the oil. It smells so good that you just want to dive into it right now actually. So what I'm going to do next with the oil in the pot from frying the bacon, I'm going to brown the onions and the garlic, both which have been chopped. Yeah, I'd say about one uh, medium-sized yellow onion and two to three cloves of garlic. I mean, if you feel free to adjust the quantity here. If you're not a fan of garlic, maybe re reduce it. Or if you prefer a bit more onion, you can use a large yellow onion. So turn the heat back on and gently saute the garlic and onion until it's soft. This will take approximately about five minutes, I would say. Do not rush this process. Do not fry it over a super high heat where all your onions are just burnt and, you know, garlic burnt. But what you want is just nice, softened brown garlic and onion, yeah? Before you throw the rest of the ingredients back into the pot, okay? So, after about five to ten minutes, when the garlic and onions are like nice and soft, so when it's really nice and soft, you Add in back the fried bacon directly into the pot. Okay, next we're gonna add in the chopped figs, which I've soaked with freshly brewed coffee. It's about half a cup of freshly brewed coffee, black coffee, no sugar. Let it soak while you're preparing the other ingredients like the chopping and cutting, yeah? And uh, another note is when you are chopping the dried figs, you don't have to chop it super small, just probably like bite size, that would be good because at the end of the day, you're gonna blend it, yeah? So there's no reason in chopping it super fine. So add it into the pot. Next up, I'm gonna add dark brown sugar. This is about two to three tablespoons, depending, again, if you want it sweeter or, you know, less sweet, you can adjust it entirely up to you. If you don't have dark brown sugar, you can use light brown sugar. And if you don't have both, just use white sugar, regular white sugar, it's fine. Yeah, add it in. And I'm gonna add the zest of one orange. I'm using a medium-sized orange here. Next, you're gonna add up all the dry spices here, okay? For example, we have paprika, cinnamon, ground ginger, and some salt. And last, I'm adding in fresh herbs. I'm only using sage here. You can use any other herbs you want. You can use thyme. You can also use rosemary to add it in. Chop the sage and add it in. Finish it off with about half a cup of water. You can add more later if you feel that the mixture is a bit dry. Give it a good stir. Stir down the brown bits at the bottom of the pan. Lower the heat to uh, same medium low. Let it gently simmer. Next up, I'm adding apple cider vinegar. If you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can use lemon juice. But I will strongly suggest to get apple cider vinegar. About three to four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And last, I'm gonna add another form of sweetener, which is maple syrup. This takes about a quarter of a cup of maple syrup. Again, if you don't have maple syrup, feel free to switch it to honey. 
that's also fine. Give it a good stir. Now you can probably see that all the brown bits at the bottom of the pan has been scraped off and the bacon jam is almost coming together. And before one last simmer, I'm going to add in the juice of one orange. Yeah, just squeeze it in. Don't worry so much about the measurement of liquid here. You can always play around with it. You want more orange juice or you want more water that goes into it. As long as it will be simmered down and thickened and that's good enough. So now, this is what how the bacon jam will look like before simmering it down. Yeah, Give it a good stir after all the ingredients have been add added in and cover the pot. Let it simmer approximately 30 minutes. Every 5 to 10 minutes, open it up, give it a good stir and make sure that the bottom does not burn. Okay, I would say my bacon jam is ready. I quite like the texture and the consistency now, the way it's thickened, where some of the liquid has evaporated. So I'm gonna switch off the heat, let it cool for a bit before I will actually hand blitz it and then it sort of becomes like a jam. When it sort of cools down, give it about five minutes, I will add a splash of brandy. How much, you ask? It's really irrelevant, okay? You want it boozy, you can add more. Or if you want to omit it completely, it's also up to you. I'm not going to judge you and say there's no alcohol in your bacon jam. But for me, I like a splash. A splash, I would say about a quarter of a cup. You can always add more later if you want. You can taste the jam after you blitz it and you can add more seasoning later. You want it a bit more salty, you want it a bit more sweet. You can adjust it later. So now that this is done, okay, so with my trusty hand blender here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blitz it a bit. I'm not going to blitz the whole thing completely to form a smooth paste. I just want some bits of the bacon and the onion and the fix to be sort of mushed up, yeah? So what you see what I'm going to do here, You do not want to turn this into a soup, yeah? Okay, so there you have it. A quick 20-30 minutes, yeah? Pot of bacon jam, which you have followed me through. And what I do is, um, I will simply just dish it out in a, in a bowl and serve it with some cheese and crackers any cheese of your choice, it doesn't really matter. Or have it over nice toasted bread, baguette is fine, or any sourdough is also good. And last but not least, the whole purpose of this is basically to do it as a form of gifting, right? So what I did here is basically I bottled it up in a simple recycled jar, tied over with some fresh sage or thyme, whatever that you wish. And it makes the most beautiful and meaningful gift, I would say. So I hope you try it, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Happy holidays from me to you. Mm -hmm.